I'm sorry, Vivian, but Ethan is very busy at the ranch and can't come to the phone right now, Scarlet says, her voice dripping with false sweetness. I grip the phone tighter, my knuckles turning white. Scarlet, it's been months since I've heard from my son. Please, just let me talk to him for a minute. I understand your concern, but you have to trust that Ethan is doing what's best for our family. The ranch demands a lot of his time and energy. Her words feel like a slap in the face. Family? She's only been a part of our lives for a short while, and suddenly she's the gatekeeper to my own son? Scarlet, I don't think you understand. I'm his mother. I have a right to speak with him. And I'm his wife, she retorts, her tone sharpening. Look, Vivian, I know this is hard for you, but you need to let Ethan focus on our future. I'll make sure he calls you when he has a chance. Before I can respond, the line goes dead. I stare at the phone in disbelief, a sinking feeling in my stomach. How did it come to this? Just a year ago, Ethan brought Scarlet home to meet the family. She was all charm and smiles, regaling us with stories of her childhood on a horse ranch in Kentucky. Ethan was smitten, and I was happy to see him so in love. But then he announced his plan to invest in Scarlet's family ranch. My daughter Aria and I were cautiously supportive, but something about Scarlet's eagerness gave me pause. Aria, ever the loyal sister, promised to be there for me after her own upcoming marriage. As Ethan and Scarlet settled into life on the ranch, the distance between us grew. Months passed without a word from my son. Scarlet would visit alone, always with an excuse for Ethan's absence. He's too preoccupied with the ranch to call, she'd say, a tight smile on her lips. My attempts to reach him were met with silence. Voicemails went unreturned, texts unanswered. It was as if my son had vanished, replaced by this stranger wearing his face. Then came my illness. As I lay in the hospital bed, weakened and afraid, Scarlet's visits were infrequent and lacking in warmth. I begged her to update Ethan on my condition, but not to worry him. Of course, she assured me, but her eyes told a different story. Now, as I sit in the living room of the home I once shared with my beloved late husband, I feel more alone than ever. My son, my precious boy, is slipping away from me, and I don't know how to stop it. Arya enters the room, her brow furrowed with concern. Mom? What's wrong? I shake my head, fighting back tears. It's Scarlet. She won't let me talk to Ethan. It's been so long, Arya. I'm scared. My daughter sits beside me, taking my hand in hers. I don't trust her, Mom. Something isn't right. As we sit in silence, the weight of our shared worry hanging heavy in the air, I can't help but wonder, what has Scarlet done to my family, and how far will she go to keep us apart? Arya's wedding day arrives, a bittersweet affair as the absence of Ethan hangs over the celebration like a dark cloud. I plaster on a smile, determined not to let my own heartache overshadow my daughter's joy. As I watch Arya exchange vows with her new husband, a sense of unease settles in my stomach. Scarlet sits in the front row, her expression unreadable. Ethan is nowhere to be seen. After the ceremony, I approach Scarlet, my voice tight with barely contained anger. Where is Ethan? How could he miss his own sister's wedding? Scarlet's lips curve into a smirk. He's tied up with a big project at the ranch. You know how important this is to our future, Vivian? More important than family? I snap, my patience wearing thin. She shrugs, her eyes cold. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made. Ethan understands that, even if you don't. I turn away, fighting back tears of frustration. Arya appears at my side, her face etched with concern. Mom, what's going on? I don't know, honey, but I'm going to find out. The reception passes in a blur, my mind consumed with thoughts of Ethan and Scarlet's increasingly suspicious behavior. As the night winds down, I pull Arya aside. I need you to do something for me, I whisper glancing around to make sure we're not overheard. Keep an eye on Scarlet. There's something not right about her, and I don't trust her with Ethan. Arya nods, her eyes hardening with determination. I've been thinking the same thing. I'll do whatever I can to help. The next few weeks pass in a haze of worry and frustration. Calls to Ethan go unanswered, and Scarlet's visits become even more infrequent. When she does show up, it's with a list of excuses and a dismissive attitude. One afternoon, as I sit alone in the living room, the phone rings. I snatch it up, hoping against hope to hear Ethan's voice on the other end. Mom? The sound of my son's voice, strained and distant, sends a wave of relief washing over me. Ethan! Oh, thank God! I've been so worried. Why haven't you called? 
Is everything okay? There's a long pause, and for a moment I fear the connection has been lost. Then, Ethan speaks again, his words coming out in a rush. Mom, I'm sorry, I don't have much time. Scarlet, she's been lying to me, to all of us. My heart hammers in my chest. What do you mean? The money I've been sending for your medical bills, she's been stealing it, gambling it away. And she's been blocking your calls, changing my email, I had no idea. Anger surges through me, white hot and all-consuming. I knew it. I knew she was up to something. I confronted her, but she's not backing down. I don't know what to do, Mom. I'm so sorry I let this happen. Listen to me, Ethan. This is not your fault. We'll figure this out together, I promise. As the call ends, I sit back in my chair, my mind reeling. Scarlet's betrayal cuts deep, but it's the thought of my son, trapped and manipulated by this vile woman, that truly breaks my heart. I think back to the day Ethan brought her into our lives, how she charmed us all with her sweet smile and honeyed words. How could I have been so blind? But now, with the truth finally out in the open, I know what I have to do. I'll make Scarlet pay for what she's done to my family. One way or another, I'll make sure she never hurts us again. The sun beats down on my face as I stand outside Scarlet's family ranch, my heart pounding in my chest. Ethan is by my side, his jaw clenched with determination. We march up to the front door, ready to confront Scarlet and demand answers. But before we can even knock, the door swings open, revealing a smirking Scarlet. Well, 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 look who finally decided to show up, she drawls, leaning against the doorframe. Cut the crap, Scarlet, Ethan snaps. We know what you've been doing, the lies, the stealing. It ends now. Scarlet's eyes narrow, her voice dripping with venom. Oh, does it now? And what exactly do you think you're going to do about it? I step forward, my anger boiling over. We're going to expose you for the manipulative, selfish woman you are. You're not going to get away with this. She laughs, a harsh, grating sound. You really think anyone is going to believe you? Poor, naive Vivian, so desperate to cling to her precious son that she'll make up any story to get him back. Ethan's hands ball into fists at his sides. I've seen the proof, Scarlet, the bank statements, the emails. It's all there. You've been stealing from my family, and you're going to pay for it. Scarlet's face twists into an ugly sneer. Pay for it? Oh, Ethan, you have no idea who you're dealing with. I've worked too hard to let a couple of pathetic, meddling fools like you ruin everything. She takes a step forward, her eyes blazing with fury. I'll destroy you both before I let that happen. I'll make sure everyone knows what a weak, spineless man you are, Ethan. And as for you, Vivian, well, let's just say that accidents happen all the time on a ranch like this. My blood runs cold at her words, but I refuse to back down. You're not going to hurt my family anymore, Scarlet. We're going to make sure of that. Ethan nods, his voice steady and strong. I've already filed for divorce, and I'm going to make sure everyone knows the truth about you. Your days of lying and manipulating are over. Scarlet's face pales, but she quickly recovers, her lips twisting into a cruel smile. You think it's that easy? You have no idea what I'm capable of. I'll make your lives a living hell. You'll be begging me to take you back, Ethan. And you, Vivian, you'll wish you never crossed me. I take a step forward, my voice low and dangerous. I'm not afraid of you, Scarlet. You've underestimated the strength of this family. We'll do whatever it takes to protect each other, no matter what. Ethan takes my hand, squeezing it tightly. We're done here, Scarlet. You'll be hearing from my lawyer. As we turn to leave, Scarlet's voice rings out behind us, filled with rage and desperation. This isn't over. You'll regret the day you ever crossed me. But we keep walking, our heads held high. We know the road ahead won't be easy, but we also know that we have each other, and that's all that matters. As we climb into the car, Ethan turns to me, his eyes filled with a mix of sadness and determination. I'm so sorry, Mom. I never meant for any of this to happen. I reach over, taking his hand in mine. It's not your fault, Ethan. Scarlet fooled us all, but we're going to make this right, together. He nods, a small smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Together, no matter what. As we drive away from the ranch, I feel a sense of hope blossoming in my chest. We've faced the darkness and we've come out stronger. And I know that no matter what lies ahead, we'll face it as a family, united and unbreakable. The divorce proceedings drag on, a bitter battle filled with accusations and lies. 
Scarlet fights tooth and nail, determined to bleed Ethan dry and ruin his reputation. But my son stands strong, refusing to back down in the face of her vicious attacks. As the months pass, I watch as Ethan struggles to rebuild his life. He throws himself into his work, determined to prove to everyone that he's not the weak, easily manipulated man Scarlet tried to paint him as. Aria and I do our best to support him, offering words of encouragement and a listening ear whenever he needs it. But I can see the toll the divorce is taking on him, the dark circles under his eyes and the weariness in his voice. One evening, as we sit around the dinner table, Ethan's phone buzzes with an incoming call. He glances at the screen, his face darkening. It's Scarlet, he mutters, his jaw clenched tight. I reach over, placing a hand on his arm. You don't have to answer it, Ethan. She has no power over you anymore. But he shakes his head, his eyes filled with a grim determination. No, I need to hear what she has to say. I'm done running from her. He steps out of the room, and Arya and I exchange worried glances. We can hear the muffled sound of Ethan's voice, the tension in his words palpable even through the walls. When he returns, his face is ashen, his hands trembling slightly. She's not going to stop, he says, his voice barely above a whisper. She's threatening to go public with all sorts of lies about me, about our family. She says she'll destroy us all if I don't give her what she wants. Arya's eyes flash with anger. She's bluffing, Ethan. She doesn't have anything on us. We've done nothing wrong. But I can see the fear in my son's eyes, the weight of Scarlet's threats bearing down on him. I don't know what to do, Mom. I can't let her hurt you or Arya. Maybe, maybe I should just give in. Give her what she wants. I stand up, my voice firm and unwavering. Absolutely not, Ethan. We're not going to let her win. We'll fight her every step of the way, no matter what it takes. Arya nods, her face set with determination. Mom's right, Ethan. We're in this together. Scarlet can't touch us if we stand united. Ethan takes a deep breath, his shoulders straightening as he looks at us both. You're right. I'm not going to let her control me anymore. We'll face whatever she throws at us as a family. The next few weeks are a whirlwind of legal battles and media scrutiny. Scarlet makes good on her threats, leaking stories to the press about Ethan's supposed infidelity and financial misdeeds. But we stand strong, refusing to be cowed by her lies and manipulation. And then, just when it seems like the storm will never end, a ray of hope appears. Liam, the casino manager, reaches out to us, offering to testify against Scarlet in exchange for a reduced sentence for his own crimes. With Liam's testimony, the truth finally comes out. The depth of Scarlet's deception is revealed, and the court sees her for the manipulative, greedy woman she truly is. In the end, Scarlet is left with nothing. Her reputation is in tatters, her fortune seized by the authorities. She's forced to take a job at a remote casino, working off her debts under Liam's watchful eye. As we watch her leave the courtroom, her head bowed in defeat, I feel a sense of relief wash over me. It's finally over. My family is safe, and we can begin to heal from the wounds Scarlet inflicted on us. Ethan takes my hand, his eyes shining with gratitude. Thank you, Mom, for never giving up on me, even when I was ready to give up on myself. I smile, squeezing his hand tightly. That's what family does, Ethan. We stand by each other, no matter what, and we always will. Two years have passed since Scarlet's downfall, and life has slowly returned to normal. Ethan has thrown himself into his work, rebuilding his reputation and his finances. Arya is happily married, expecting her first child any day now. As for me, I've found a new sense of purpose in my life. I've started volunteering at a local women's shelter, helping other women who have been through similar experiences of betrayal and manipulation. But even as we move forward, the scars of the past still linger. Ethan, in particular, struggles with the weight of Scarlet's betrayal, the guilt of not seeing through her lies sooner. One evening, as we sit together in the living room, Ethan's phone buzzes with an incoming message. He glances at the screen, his face going pale. It's from Scarlet, he says, his voice barely above a whisper. She wants to meet with me, to apologize for everything she's done. I feel a surge of anger rising in my chest. Absolutely not, Ethan. She's just trying to manipulate you again. You don't owe her anything. But Ethan shakes his head, his eyes filled with a mix of pain and determination. I need to do this, Mom. I need to face her, to get closure on this whole mess. 
Arya reaches over, taking his hand in hers. Are you sure about this, Ethan? She's hurt you so much already. Ethan nods, his jaw set firmly. I'm sure. I need to do this for myself to prove that she doesn't have any power over me anymore. The next day, Ethan meets with Scarlet at a local coffee shop. I wait anxiously at home, my stomach tied in knots as the minutes tick by. When Ethan finally returns, his face is drawn and tired, but there's a lightness to his step that I haven't seen in years. How did it go? I ask, my voice trembling slightly. Ethan takes a deep breath, a small smile playing at the corners of his mouth. It was hard, but it was necessary. I told her how much she hurt me, how much damage she caused to our family, and then I forgave her. I feel a surge of pride and love for my son, for the strength and compassion he's shown in the face of such pain. I'm so proud of you, Ethan. You've come so far. He nods, his eyes shining with unshed tears. I couldn't have done it without you, Mom, without all of you. You've been my rock through all of this. Arya stands up, pulling Ethan into a tight hug. We're family, Ethan. We'll always be here for you, no matter what. As we sit together, reminiscing about the past and looking forward to the future, I feel a sense of peace wash over me. We've been through so much, but we've come out stronger on the other side. And then, just as we're about to call it a night, Arya lets out a sharp gasp, her hand flying to her belly. It's time, she says, her eyes wide with a mix of excitement and fear. The baby's coming. The next few hours are a blur of activity, of rushing to the hospital and waiting anxiously for news. And then, just as the sun is beginning to rise, we hear the sound of a baby's cry echoing through the halls. As we gather around Arya's bedside, marveling at the tiny, perfect bundle in her arms, I feel a sense of hope and renewal washing over me. This is what family is all about, the love, the support, the unbreakable bonds that tie us together. I look around at the faces of my children, at the love and strength shining in their eyes, and I know that no matter what the future holds, we'll face it together. Always and forever, united as one. The sound of laughter fills the air as we gather in Arya's backyard, celebrating her daughter's first birthday. Ethan chases after his niece, a goofy grin on his face as she toddles away on unsteady legs. I sit back in my chair, watching the scene with a contented smile. It's hard to believe how far we've come in the past year, how much healing and growth has taken place. As the party winds down and the guests start to leave, Arya pulls me aside, her face etched with concern. Mom, there's something I need to tell you, she says, her voice low and serious. It's about Scarlet. I feel a chill run down my spine at the mention of that name. What about her? Arya takes a deep breath, her eyes darting nervously around the yard. I saw her the other day at the casino. She was with some guy, laughing and drinking like she didn't have a care in the world. I feel a surge of anger rising in my chest. She's supposed to be working off her debts, not living it up like some high roller. Arya nods, her face grim. I know, but that's not all. I overheard her talking about Ethan, about how she's planning to get him back. My heart stops in my chest. What do you mean, get him back? She was saying something about how she's been saving up money, how she's going to use it to make Ethan an offer he can't refuse. She's convinced that he still loves her, that he'll come running back to her if she just gives him the chance. I shake my head, my mind reeling with the implications of Arya's words. We have to tell Ethan. He needs to know what she's planning. But even as I say the words, I feel a sense of dread washing over me. I know my son— know how much he struggled to move on from the pain of Scarlet's betrayal. The thought of her worming her way back into his life, of causing him even more heartache, is almost too much to bear. Later that evening, as Ethan and I sit together in the living room, I broach the subject carefully, not wanting to cause him any more pain than necessary. Ethan, there's something you need to know, I say, my voice trembling slightly. It's about Scarlet. He stiffens at the mention of her name, his eyes growing dark and guarded. What about her? I take a deep breath, forcing myself to continue. Arya saw her at the casino the other day. She was talking about you, about how she's planning to get you back. Ethan's face goes pale, his hands clenching into fists at his sides. She's delusional if she thinks I'd ever go back to her, not after everything she's done. I reach over, taking his hand in mine. I know, Ethan. But she's convinced that you still love her, 
that she can win you over with money and promises. He shakes his head, his jaw set firmly. She can't buy me, Mom. She never could. I'm done with her. Done with all of her lies and manipulation. I nod, feeling a surge of pride and love for my son. I know you are, Ethan, but we need to be careful. Scarlet's not the kind of woman who takes no for an answer. Ethan takes a deep breath, his eyes shining with a fierce determination. Don't worry, Mom. I'm not going to let her hurt our family again. No matter what she tries, no matter what she offers, I'll never go back to her. Never. As we sit together in the quiet of the evening, I feel a sense of unease washing over me. I know that Scarlet won't give up easily, that she'll stop at nothing to get what she wants. But I also know that we're stronger now than we've ever been. We've faced the worst that life has thrown at us, and we've come out the other side. And no matter what the future holds, we'll face it together, united as a family against all odds. The next few weeks pass in a haze of tension and uncertainty. Ethan throws himself into his work, determined to keep his mind off of Scarlet and her scheming. But I can see the toll it's taking on him, the dark circles under his eyes, and the weariness in his voice. Arya and I do our best to support him, to keep a watchful eye out for any sign of Scarlet's interference. But as the days turn into weeks, we begin to wonder if perhaps she's given up, if she's finally accepted that Ethan is truly done with her. And then, one evening, the phone rings. I answer it, my heart pounding in my chest as I hear the voice on the other end. Vivian, it's Liam. I need to talk to you about Scarlet. I feel a chill run down my spine at the urgency in his voice. What is it, Liam? What's going on? He takes a deep breath, his voice low and serious. She's planning something big, Vivian. Something that could ruin Ethan's life forever. I grip the phone tighter, my knuckles turning white. What do you mean? What is she planning? She's been embezzling money from the casino, skimming off the top for months now. She's got a huge sum saved up, and she's planning to use it to frame Ethan for the crime. I feel like I've been punched in the gut, the air rushing out of my lungs in a painful gasp. Frame him? How? She's been setting up fake accounts in his name, transferring the money bit by bit. She's got fake documentation, false witnesses, everything she needs to make it look like he's been in on it from the start. I shake my head, my mind reeling with the implications of Liam's words. But why? Why would she do this? Because she's obsessed with him, Vivian. She's convinced that if she can just ruin his life, destroy everything he's worked for, he'll have no choice but to come crawling back to her. I feel a surge of rage rising in my chest, hot and fierce. That's never going to happen. Ethan's done with her, done with her lies and her manipulation. Liam sighs, his voice heavy with regret. I know that, Vivian. But Scarlet's not thinking clearly. She's desperate, and desperate people do crazy things. I take a deep breath, forcing myself to stay calm. What do we do, Liam? How do we stop her? I've got a plan, but it's risky. I need you to trust me, Vivian. Can you do that? I hesitate for a moment, my mind racing with the possibilities. But then I think of Ethan, of the pain and suffering he's already endured at Scarlet's hands and I know that I'll do whatever it takes to protect him, to keep our family safe. I trust you, Liam. Just tell me what you need me to do. Over the next few days, Liam and I work tirelessly to gather evidence against Scarlet, to build a case that will expose her lies and bring her to justice. It's a dangerous game we're playing, and I know that if we make even one misstep, it could all come crashing down around us. But we press on, driven by our love for Ethan and our determination to see Scarlet pay for her crimes. And finally, after weeks of hard work and sleepless nights, we have everything we need. We confront Scarlet at the casino, surrounded by security guards and federal agents. She tries to run, to slip away in the chaos, but we're ready for her. As the handcuffs click shut around her wrists, I feel a sense of relief washing over me. It's over. The nightmare is finally over. Ethan pulls me into a tight hug, his eyes shining with tears of gratitude. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for never giving up on me for fighting for our family. I smile, my heart swelling with love and pride. That's what mothers do, Ethan. We fight for our children, no matter what. As we walk out of the casino, arm in arm, I know that the road ahead won't be easy. There will be trials and challenges, moments of doubt and fear— but I also know that we'll face them together, united as a family against all odds. And in the end, that's all that really matters.
The sun is shining brightly as we gather in the garden, surrounded by friends and family. It's Aria's wedding day, a celebration of love and new beginnings. As I watch my daughter walk down the aisle, radiant in her white gown, I feel a sense of joy and contentment washing over me. After all the pain and struggle of the past few years, it's a relief to finally have something to celebrate. Ethan stands beside me, his eyes shining with pride, as he watches his sister exchange vows with the man she loves. I know that he's been through so much that the wounds of Scarlet's betrayal are still raw and painful. But as I look at him now, I see a strength and resilience that I never knew he possessed. He's grown so much in the past year, learned to trust himself and his own judgment. And I know that no matter what the future holds, he'll always have the love and support of his family to guide him through. As the ceremony comes to a close, and the guests begin to mingle, I catch sight of a familiar face in the crowd. It's Liam, looking slightly uncomfortable in his suit and tie. I make my way over to him, my heart swelling with gratitude. Liam, I'm so glad you could make it. I know it must be difficult for you, being here. He shakes his head, a small smile playing at the corners of his mouth. I wouldn't have missed it for the world, Vivian. Your family has been through so much, and I'm just happy to see you all so happy and at peace. I nod, feeling a lump rising in my throat. We couldn't have done it without you, Liam. You risked everything to help us, to bring Scarlet to justice. I'll never be able to thank you enough for that. He reaches out, taking my hand in his. You don't have to thank me, Vivian. I did what I did because it was the right thing to do. Scarlet was a cancer eating away at everything good and decent in this world. I'm just glad I could play a part in stopping her. As we stand there, watching the happy couple dance and laugh, I feel a sense of closure washing over me. The past few years have been a nightmare, a waking hell of lies and betrayal and pain. But we've come through it stronger, more united than ever before, and I know that no matter what the future holds, we'll always have each other to lean on. Later that evening, as the party winds down and the guests begin to leave, Ethan pulls me aside, his face serious. "'Mom, there's something I need to tell you,' he says, his voice low and earnest. "'I've been thinking a lot about the future, about what I want to do with my life, and I've decided that I want to go back to school to get my degree in social work. I feel a surge of pride and love for my son, for the man he's become. Oh, Ethan, that's wonderful. I know you'll be amazing at it.' He nods, his eyes shining with determination. I want to help people, Mom. I want to make a difference in the world, to use my experiences to help others who are struggling like we did. I pull him into a tight hug, my heart swelling with emotion. I'm so proud of you, Ethan. So proud of the man you've become. As we stand there, surrounded by the love and laughter of our family and friends, I feel a sense of hope and possibility washing over me. The future is bright full of promise and potential. And I know that no matter what challenges we face, no matter what obstacles we encounter, we'll always have each other to lean on, always and forever, united as a family against all odds.